now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Until midnight tonight from New York, New York. The city's so nice. Yeah, they named it twice. Ladies and gentlemen, out in California, there's a guy who lives out there. His name is Larry Bubbles Brown, and we talk to him about once a week or, you know, once every or couple. So, and, or so. Uh, I recently talked to an old friend of ours, uh, Will Durst. So. Oh, Will. Will. I, I, went mean, down, I went down to visit him, yes. He's still in the uh, nursing home? Yes. I'm going to... I, I, every day I say, I got to call him, got to call him. Give him a call, yeah. But, you know, I get frustrated sometimes trying to call him because sometimes he just doesn't answer the phone. You know, how's he... Yeah, get, he never answers, I don't think. But, you know, uh, he does, but, you know, I have to... Have, well, it, what, it's whatever. So how how is he? He was in good spirits. He said uh, he actually showed me his leg moving a little bit, so he thinks that he thinks he's going to come back. Yeah. Do you know how long it's taken for that leg to move? Yeah, three years. Three years, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, sh- sure, the leg might come back a little bit, but I I, I think he's going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. But I think they yeah. should get him out of that nursing home, you know. Yeah, yeah. I would like that. Would uh, It's a very small room. I'd say I think uh, he needs to get home. So, Well, I think his recovery would be better at home. Than sitting there in that bed in that in that hospital, uh, which is also eating up a lot of money, you know, which could be sent in on therapy at home. Yeah, and if therapists can come out to his home, they can come to your home, right? Uh, yeah, I would just yeah. think that uh, it'd be so much better for your mind, your mental outlook, because the hospital those things are so depressing. Oh well, yeah, yeah, they really are. And uh, you know, I my mother when she was old i put her in the uh, jewish home for the aged which we were lucky to get her into because there are only 300 beds in that hospital and they have also 300 people working there so there's one person for every person who's there and it was a wonderful hospital it, she had a very nice room all her own you know and uh, it was just a, a great place for her but I had her previously in some pretty terrible places. Most of those nursing homes are horrid. Yeah, you know, and they're not they're not cheap. And so the best thing to do for your parent, if you love them, is to try and get them out of there. I had to get her into into the Jewish home for the aged, mainly because she was aged and she's Jewish, um, and I put her in there because it was really terrific but we had her in a couple of places that were just you know they were they were trying hard but they just didn't have the money to do it you know uh and uh i I really was glad she got in there because the last couple of years of her life were spent there and she was taken care of you know the first thing they did when she got there is they shaved her well actually they shaved her all she had hair on her face a little, you know how old ladies get yeah. one, one, one long hair, you know. Well, she had several of them. They cleaned her all up, you know. And when I went in, she looked wonderful. Um, so you can be in, in good, you know, good rest homes. But in general, it's they're not that good, you know, and they're not no. that helpful. So. And she lived to be 100. She lived to be a hundred. She hundred and a half or something like that. Now, did she like? Uh, was she like happy at the, that in the late nineties? And well, you know, I don't know. Towards the end, I mean, I'm, I'm glad she knew who I was. You know, I mean, she didn't have Alzheimer's. She had um, what do you call it? The, uh, see, now I can't think of words. I'm ready to go to the Jewish home for the age of. <laughs> she had dementia. She had dementia. Uh, and uh, you know she she knew who I was, but she was 
in La La Land. We okay. gave her a hundredth birthday party, and I think she knew it was her hundredth birthday party. But you know, she wasn't uh, she wasn't all there at that point. Um, and there are some people over a hundred who are all there. I mean, some actors. Uh, Kirk Douglas, I think, was very aware. He made a hundred. Yeah, he made a hundred two. I think. Jesus. And um, the guy who fell off the uh, Statue of Liberty in Hitchcock's... Uh, 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 what? Wasn't he 107? Uh, 100 and... I think it was 105 or 106. Jesus, God. Yeah. you got to think every morning's your last when you wake up at that age. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I should be happy for 83. You know, how many people go before that? You know, uh, and uh, they, uh, who was that I read? Oh, I read the other day, and I re her, read or read online, um, because I looked up Rita Hayworth. Remember the Rita Hayworth? Gorgeous woman, just wonderfully gorgeous. Uh, in fact, I was watching Pal Joey, that's what made me look her up. And she lived to be, are you ready for this? I think. I may be wrong by a couple of years. I don't know. 64 years old. 64. Wow. And uh, she died. What was it? She died of Alzheimer's. At 64. That seems young for Alzheimer's. Yeah. 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 She really went. Wasn't she the one that uh, Sinatra was the one that was lost his mind over her? Ava Gardner is who you're thinking. Ava Gardner. Okay. Yeah. But Rita Hayworth was hot. Oh, she was hot. Very hot. Everybody said uh, Ava Gardner was like the most beautiful woman in the movies. And I didn't find anything particularly sexy about her. I was hot for, uh, I was hot for Kim Novak. I was hot, for, oh, you know who I was hot for? Natalie Wood. <laughs> now there was a hot woman, you know. Those Russian women are just, you know, they're, they're cool. They're very good. And she... she died was, at uh, 40, 41? Yeah, something like that. Just, but, you know, just, I found her just absolutely in, in rebel without a causes when I fell in love with her. And it was because she, she had a beauty, but it was a natural beauty, you know? You could imagine that she could walk around the house without lipstick and makeup, and she would look great. But a lot of those big movie actresses, if they took off all that makeup, you know. It was, I, I always loved the a woman that was in Creature from the Black Lagoon. What was, what oh, was Julie it? Adams. Julie Adams, yeah, wow. See, yeah, I can't remember words, but I can remember Julie Adams. Yeah, you, you never forget the actors. That's great. No, how is that? I don't understand that. Why did I come up with that? Why should I care who Julie Adams is? Well, you yeah, have, he's, you're he, in the encyclopedia when it comes to movies. I know that. Well, you know, that movie, if you watch it, The Creature from the Black Lagoon, is, is softcore porn. She's like... Oh, yeah. She's, yeah. she's like... She's got that white one-piece baby suit. Yeah, and she's swimming, and the creature is under her, floating on his <laughs> back, along with her. It's almost like they're having sex. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, and I often felt sorry for the creature because I, I felt as a young man, he deserves to get horny now and then, you know? Well, he's got needs. He has needs. <laughs> exactly. Well, the, uh, the uh, Bobby Slayton had uh, one of, I think, a dozen. They had uh, creature. Mm -hmm. They had the creature. They made like a little plastic mold. They only had like a dozen. They had them in certain theaters around the country. And they were used, to, they were used as theater stand-ups. They were, you know just complete creature from the black, black lagoon statues yeah. yeah yeah i know that you know why i know that because i'm the guy that got the call from from uh from slayton hey you gotta loan me a can you loan me a thousand dollars and i said yeah sure you know because he was my one of my best friends yeah, you, know, you need a thousand? Great. What do you need it for? I just need it. I just need it. I gotta have it. Then I figured, oh, he's gonna go spend it on he's gotta buy some clothes or something like that, or he, the car broke and he needs to have it fixed. 
he goes down and buys that creature. And he says, guess what I bought? I said, what? He said, a full statue of the uh, creature of the Black Lagoon. I said, oh, how much did that cost? He said, $1,000. I said, where'd you get the money? He said, from you. <laughs> I got paid back eventually. But, you know, it just, that, so when you mentioned the creature, I went, yeah, I know the creature. I know the creature he owns, you know. Well, that he, probably wasn't a bad investment. I don't know. I, I, it's a good question what it would be worth today, you know. Um, the question of what things are worth, and I learned this from Shecky because, you know, he knew about that sort of stuff. He said, it's only worth as much as other people are willing to pay for it. In other words, those are objects that go up in value because a lot of people want them. Uh, but if they, a lot of people don't want them, then you've got yourself a creature from the Black Lagoon. Have fun with it, you know. Yeah. So uh, you never know how much things are going to be worth. Um, he valued the postcard I have from John Lennon at one point at being about $25,000. Uh, I don't know what it would be worth today because the value on the Beatles has gone up, then it goes down, then it goes up, then it goes down, you know. So maybe you should maybe you should sell it. Yeah, I mean, well, I would sell it if I really needed to. But I got this whole ton of money coming my way, and I so I I kind of don't care about any of that, you know. I don't. <laughs> I don't well, that's need a good it. position to be in. Well, I don't need it, you know. I'm just trying to figure out a lot of ways to spend that money before I drop dead. We're looking. You know what we're looking at? <laughs> Renting of. <a, Yeah. laughs> You gotta, you gotta, you gotta plan it just right to when you die, you have about a nickel in your bank account. Yeah, yeah, and don't, and I never, and never pay off your credit cards, okay? You know, always, always have a little extra in your credit card. Anyway, um, no, so we, I'm looking at villas in Europe to stay at, and you can you can rent a villa, a really nice villa, for instance, in Italy for five thousand a week. And uh, hey, I'm gonna have that kind of fu money, you know. So why not why not do it, you know? Um, in fact, maybe two weeks. God, that'd be great. And by the way, by the way, let me just say that for instance, I have a villa here, for instance. Uh, uh, here's one. It doesn't say how much, uh, but uh, it, oh, let me let me just open this up. Oh, those are that's a beautiful estate. It's called the Mill Estate. Uh, let's see here, the Mill Estate, and it has eight bedrooms, sleeps sixteen. Okay, now if we were to rent that for a week. Uh, we don't. We're it's too uh, awfully big for two people, isn't it? Yeah. So I have to start inviting people. So if you want to join us at our villa in Italy, all you have to do is fly over there, and you can come stay with us for a week. You know. What yeah, I'm that's great. And you got to make sure you got to fly first class. But you don't have to fly first class. Man, yeah. if you got the money, you got to go first class. Well, you know, I always consider first class a waste of money. Especially on a trip like, if I'm going to, uh, uh, let's say, Italy. What is it? It's an eight-hour flight, maybe? Yeah. Maybe, at most. I can do eight hours in coach. You know, I what, what do I need that big fluffy chair for, you know, and all of that? Um, the only reason I might do first class is I've got to get rid of my air miles. Which I have after years and years. I have about three hundred sixty thousand air miles. Jesus. Um, so I have to use those up. See, I, I, at this point in my life, folks, I'm eighty-three, right? I, I I'm coming into a chunk of money. All right. Uh, I uh, have all these air miles, right? So. It's like I've got to use them all up. I, I'm at that age where I don't know how long this is going to keep going on, you know? So i got to use them all up before I go. i got to spend all the money before I go. Uh, and uh, you know, or it, But if Marjorie goes before me, 
that's fine. I still think I would have more than enough money to live on for the rest of my life. But on the other hand, if I go out before Marjorie, you know, it should have enough for her to live on for the rest of her life. So, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just, I got to use all this stuff up. I got to use the air miles. Got to use the money. Got to, you know, I mean, it's not a terrible thing, but it, you got to do it. You know, so. I mean, I told my business manager, uh, I'm going to spend the money like crazy. Right? And he said, yeah, go ahead. You gotta, he yeah, said, you got to have fun. And he agreed with that theory. I said, we just want to keep traveling. You know? So, whatever. So, you know. I'm not saying how I'm getting the money or what it is, but uh, it, it's it's not inconsiderable. And, uh, you know, it's a matter of I'm at an age where if I had gotten this money when I was 50, it would be a different story of how I would spend it very carefully, you know. But I have no kids, you know, I have no, and neither does Marjorie. So nobody's going to inherit our I mean, I, we have wills, and the uh, the inheritance goes to me on hers, and mine uh, gives it all to her, and that's pretty much it. And who I don't know what who it goes to if uh, if I die and then she dies, and I don't know who gets the money, but I think she has some. That's that's called you die intestate, and the state gets it. Yeah, well, I'm, I, well, what I'm going to do, I told Marjorie, is because of, of the money. Uh, I said, I think we should redo our wills and go to an attorney and get it done properly. She did it you know, online and things like that. And it's legal. It's very legal. But uh, it just, you know, it doesn't really account for much. You know, I don't know who gets all my stuff, all my garbage. I guess she does if I die first. Yeah. We were thinking of doing a, 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 a suicide, a group suicide. What do they call <laughs> it? Um, and, and just, to, you know. But here's why I don't want to commit suicide with her. <laughs> I don't know that I have the guts to pull the trigger. <laughs> All right? And I don't know if she does either. So if one of us pulls her, I mean, like with Hitler, I think about poor Ava Braun. I think she died first, didn't she? Uh-huh. Yeah. How did she know Hitler would kill himself? Right. You know, you kill yourself, and then Hitler doesn't kill himself. You've done that for nothing. So how do you... Gotta remember. <laughs> you know, you don't know the other person is living up to the deal. Remember one morning we were on the radio, I think it was 96, and that uh, uh, there was a mass suicide, and it was, I think they're called the Hail Bop. <laughs> yeah, that was the guy, th those were the guys who uh, went to bed with their tennis shoes on, wasn't that it? And, there, and this guy, oh, you're going to go through, sp the guy looked like a total nut, and he convinced like a ton of people to kill themselves. Yeah, uh, this was a minor Jonestown, Yeah, is what it was. And the guy was, they all, there was this comet or this, this hail bot comet. And that it was going to come. And when it came, the world was going to come to an end. And uh, they were going to be picked up and swept away. And, you know, and they bought, they, some intelligent people actually believe, you looked at the guy, he looked like a total lunatic. Yeah. And what, and what, what do they do? They all, they all take pills. I think that was it. I think they, I think they took the poison. Yeah. Yeah, they took the, took the pills, and then he had Jonestown. I mean, well, how does that kind of thing happen? You know. Yeah, that was like nine hundred people. You, you know, I mean, it, it just amazing, uh, mass suicide. Amazing that people do it. But anyway, so that's why I don't know if I'm going to have a suicide pact with Marjorie. <laughs> Because I, I, yeah, you, I'm, you don't I have no do guarantee that. that after I pull the trigger, she's going to, you know. So uh, maybe we could just like do it with pills or something, and then go one, two, three, and then both swallow it. And then if she doesn't swallow, I know she hasn't swallowed, and I'm not dead yet. And you better swallow. <laughs> no, I guess mass suicide is not something we're going to do. Yeah. No. Uh, but you know, uh, um, um, this is you, you know, I you, the thing I like talking to you about 
Larry, is you're so positive about things. Yeah. Every yeah. time we sit here and start talking, it winds up on some very dark subject. Well, I think that uh, I just remember as a kid, I was just always thinking about death, and nobody would, nobody else liked to talk, even talk, you wouldn't talk about it then. When, well, I mean, you're a kid. You know, death is a long way away, hopefully, unless while you're worrying about death, you get run over by a bus or something. Yeah, or you always see that there's always one kid in your class, like eight years old, that dies of cancer or something. Yeah, but but the point was that I I uh, uh, I always worried about death, just like you from the very beginning. Well, you know, I would go to bed at night and couldn't sleep because I was worrying about death. Did you ever have that happen? Wow, I never got that far. No. Oh, it was terrible. Just terrible. Uh, and and, and uh, I mean. It's not a unfounded fear because you do know that eventually, someday, you are in fact going to die. Uh, but I always worried about it, you know, because I, I I just can't conceive of not existing, you know. And well, mo most people turn away from reality. We looked it in the eye. Well, I've decided that uh, that you know. We've had a lot of natural disasters lately. California, the only thing you're missing now. Are I figure what, what was it? Locust, locust, locust lo boils, and and frogs. Well, they had the the same night the hurricane came in in Southern Cal. They also had an earthquake, so I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, that, yeah. But California, it's just one tragedy after another. Okay, and I just figured, you know, nature should be re uh, thought of, and maybe it is a sentient being. And that it's just simply saying, "Screw you! You're, you know, you're not taking good care of me. I'm going to get rid of you." And then you get all these fires. The fires this year, fires are just the thing, right? Yeah. Uh, and and I think it's nature being sentient and saying, "That's it. I've had it with you. <laughs> you know, you're not getting away with this anymore." You know, you better, you're custodians of, of this planet. You better better take better care of it, you know? We're like a bad tenant. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, I mean, it's it's pretty it's pretty sad all the way around the, what's happening. I mean, it's just, and especially out in California. I mean, you're just the repository of every plague known to mankind. And it's just one right after the other, too. You know, you have a fire and it burns the wood, and then you have a heavy rain and you get the mudslides. You know. Yeah, you don't get any. Well, I guess there are fault lines in Manhattan, right? But uh, I don't Look, think you guys have ever had an earthquake. No, there's a fault line going right through, I think, Central Park. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and they say that it's not a small fault line. It's just never, you know... Rumbled. I think on occasion they do register some activity, but it's very minor. And I wonder why, because you would think if it was there, after all these years, you would have had one good tremor or something like that. You would that. think, yeah. You would think, but it's not, it's not, that's not the, the way things are. It's a pretty solid, uh, stable fault. Uh, the biggest fault in the country is the New Madras fault is out in the Midwest somewhere? Missouri, and it caused the largest earthquake, I think, in 1804. It, uh, really? But it hasn't really gone since, has it? It hasn't gone since, but it was. it's in Missouri, and it was actually felt in Philadelphia. That's how big the earthquake was. Yeah, So, and that one could go any day. You don't that know. Could be, yeah, that'd be a monster. Be, it could be an absolute monster. Out in California, where you just used to them, you know, Marjorie said, "Oh, they had a quake down in a little, you know, wherever that quake was, the latest one." And I, yeah, I a small one. I saw the pictures on television. I said, "Ah, eh, that's just a, you know, that's that's a sh little shaker. That's all, you know, uh, four point zero. Ha ha. You know, I've been through a five point nine. Yeah, you haven't yeah, lived I till you went through a five point nine. You went through a five point nine. 6.9 and 89. Yeah, 6.9. Yeah, yeah. Santa, what was that called? The uh, Loma Prieta. Loma Prieta. Yeah. 
So. You almost lost your house. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I, um, I, all my books got shaken out of the bookcase, you know, things like that. Yeah, you, were in the, you were in the hardest hit part of the city. Yeah, but I didn't have much damage. I had a crack in my wall, and I they wanted to fix it. They came in and fixed everything in the apartment. They wanted to fix the crack in the wall. I said, leave it there. And I said, why? I said, I want to be able to say to people, see that? Earthquake. Mm -hmm. You know? So I, I left it. I think it was there till I left. I had a crack in the wall. Anyway, that's me. I like cracks in my wall. Hey, listen. We've run out of time again. And earthquake. We just start blabbing and, and, and yeah. it's very easy. We touch on earthquakes, death, all the fun topics. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I'll see you uh, next time, okay? Next week, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, yeah. Okay, wait a minute. What's happening? Oh, I did, I, I've got... Uh, huh, I did something wrong here. Hold on a second. Let me, uh, let me just change something here. I, I'm always uh, doing things uh, a little bit wrong. You notice right over here, there's see there's a, a seam right there. That's because my my uh, green screen is uh, is um, kind of screwed up here. So let me do this. Let me do this, and I'm there. We go. See now I'm fine. Now I'm fine. Now you don't see that seam, and you don't see any of that. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's see here. Again, uh, nobody, for the most part, calling us uh, right now. Um, uh, and uh, uh, who, who knows how many people will call us tonight. I don't know. This is getting a little puny, I think. I think I've got to figure out, I've got to figure out something new to do with this, like a new way to do this show. Uh, maybe do it one day a week, uh, you know. Do the Monday thing and do a Friday thing and leave it at that because everybody seems to not really care anymore. Uh, and very few people are here at the very beginning, so, you know, whatever. So let me admit all these people and uh, let me, uh, all these people, there's, uh, there's Jeff, we can barely see him because his nose is only showing. Uh, and hello to Josh. Hello, Josh. How are you this evening? Huh? Uh, you know. Oh, he's uh, uh, Jeff. You've got. The, you, you have the audio up. Can you hear us now, Jeff? Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Yeah. Well, now let us see your whole face. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, hello. How are there you? It is. How y'all doing? Best, oh, wait a minute. Best face I got. Oh, uh, Bree is calling us. I, where, but let's find out where in the world is Bree tonight. That's, uh, that's probably the big question. Let's see. Well, uh, let's see here. Bree, I'm trying to figure out. That looks to me like you're probably in, uh, you're back in, uh, uh, where do you call it? You're back where you were, right? Yes. But not Bree. We can't hear Bree. No? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, Bree, can you hear us? Yeah. Can you talk to us? Well, I can try, but I don't know if you can hear oh, me. Oh, there, there. We can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, oh, okay. you're in, uh, yep. are you in where? Kuala Lumpur? That's right. Yeah. See, I can tell by those towers. Yeah. What a world we live in! I can talk to uh, I can talk to Jeff, who's sitting up there in uh, Connecticut. Or I can talk to uh, Josh, who is uh, where are you again, Josh? I keep forgetting. Uh, I live in Ohio. In Ohio, and then uh, here he's in Kuala Lumpur, and the, everybody's picture, well, probably the best looking picture is the one from Kuala Lumpur. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's just amazing to me. This is the world, I'm going to get my coffee here. Uh, th this is the world that I dreamt of, okay? So. Crazy. We're, huh? Isn't it crazy? It's terrific. Mm -hmm. It's terrific. 
How you doing, Josh? Good. Yeah. Not too bad. How you doing? Yeah. You enjoying the politics of the moment? <laughs> well, it's uh, <laughs> certainly there. Yeah. Some to some to take a look at every day. Yeah. Yeah. You getting the, you getting all the uh, information over there, uh, uh, Bree? What's that, Alex? You getting all the political information over there from the United States? Um, yeah, for the most part. Yeah. Um, you know, I I try to keep up with it a little bit, and I know you were talking about it with Albert yesterday. Yeah. Uh, or was it the day before? Yeah. Albert raised the you know the question about why people listen in. He said it's more like a phone call, and you know, I kind of was thinking about that um, today about it's easier for me to talk to you when we don't have video. Um, I kind of like radio. I'm more audio oriented. Yeah. And yeah. And so when we have the video, I, I don't understand it. That's why I try like, you know, I just happen to be in town. So I figure, OK, well, this is a nice background. Yeah. And it gives some but it gives people something to look at. Yeah. Other than just me sitting there and you see my face, which I don't think is particularly enticing, you know, in terms of. Uh, right. But the, tower, but, but the towers other, behind you were called what? Those are the Patronus towers, the twin towers. Yeah. Yeah. But Patronus is the company, you know, behind it. It's like the U.S. Steel Building in Pittsburgh. Oh, so these it's, are the Patronus towers. Well, they're very, you know, yeah. when you when you see pictures of Kuala Lumpur, that's like... Uh, Is it better very, this way or that way? It's better that way, yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 when you see those, uh, you say, oh, Kuala Lumpur, you know. It's kind of like yeah. the Empire. There's a lot of... Huh? There's a lot of tourists here right now. Do you want to see them? Sure. Let's see the tourists on, in the streets of Kuala Lumpur. Well, welcome, welcome, gotta... welcome to our little travelogue, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. There, well, there, you see, that's not a lot. Can we see that? Oh, there we go. Now we're getting to see yeah. quite a few people down there. Yeah. And what is that little uh, piece of water? Is that like a little uh, pond? Oh, it's just a. Uh, it's just where people take their pictures oh, you know, I, for the tower. Oh, I see. Because they, wow. they they can take a picture of the tower with the water. Uh, yeah, that's wow. right. Leading up to it. Yeah, that's very nice. Yeah, that, very nice. I think most of the time when I've called you, I've actually been on the other side. Yeah. Um, because that's that's where I always go. And I had a friend come recently, mm -hmm. and she wanted to come on this side. And I was like, oh, well, I like the other side because there's a park. And this the side over here is more like all the buses and the tourists. But then I, it was kind of the first time I saw it from this side, really. You know. Yeah, well, that's really nice. You know, did you get a new camera? Because the pictures look phenomenal now. Well, I'm on 5G and I'm I'm using my S22 Ultra. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, but uh, I I just wanted to go back for a minute to the reason why I listen mm -hmm. uh, or, or call, and uh, it's because I I like to consider myself a pragmatic, moderate centrist. And mm -hmm. the thing about you, Alex, always has been that you don't take yourself too seriously. Yeah. And, you know, I, I kind of got tired of, I used to listen to Rush Limbaugh in his early days. When he and, was, when he was, when he was, when he was, when he was fun. He was fun back yeah. in the day. Yeah, yes, exactly. And same with Sean Hannity. Sean Hannity used to have Mike Farrell on. I don't know if you remember him well, from the trouble, MASH. Well, the trouble with Sean Hannity is he was always a... Limbaugh wannabe, you know. Yeah. Uh, and and never c got beyond that. He just you know, and the trouble was, and I you know my old friend Alan Combs used to work with him, right? Mm -hmm. And Alan yeah. told me the day that Sean Hannity became bad was the day he started taking himself seriously. Yeah. He said all yeah. of a sudden one day Hannity took himself seriously. Everybody was listening to him. He was going to change the world and everything like that. Yes. Meanwhile, Limbaugh, yeah. believe it or not, Limbaugh never took himself too seriously. You know, I know people find that hard to believe. But show me an incident where he actually showed that he was taking himself very seriously. 
you know. I mean, he just he was doing a show. He was yeah. an old disc jockey. He that's what mm -hmm. he was doing, you know. So, I well, know. But, yeah, and I'm, here's the thing, Alex. Yeah. Final thing. I don't want to dominate the time. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, the, it's the mark of an educated mind that you can be exposed to something, and and not necessarily adopt it as your own. But you can see the perspective, and I feel like Sean Hannity, he. Over the years, he just he was just wearing a straight jacket that got pulled tighter and tighter, so he could never <laughs> he could never admit certain things or go a certain way, even though it's clearly that's what the reality was, because that wasn't his brand, that wasn't what well, he was doing. Well, I always doing. said that the and greatest so, the greatest problem with people like Sean Hannity and people even like Limbaugh is that they never were able to put out the following phrase. Well, then again, I could be wrong. <laughs> You never heard yes. them ever say that, you know. Yeah. And I always said it. I said, that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. And I felt that talk yeah. show hosts should admit that they can be wrong. You know, because yes. uh, all, and the only reason... They that only, is a weakness. The only reason people are listening to their opinion is because they're the guy who got the job. <laughs> you know, yeah. that, that was it, plain and simple. Well, let's say hello to some of our other people. We've got uh, uh, Vernon here tonight, which is great. We love having you here, Vernon. Uh, and are you, you're back from vacation, aren't you? Yes, and I wish I had a way that I could show you my whale video. I've got a minute and seven seconds of humpback whales that came up to our can... excursion boat. I got almost where I could reach out and touch them. Sure, they were was... so close. Set it as your video background. No, he yeah, can't well, do. He can't do I, that. I don't have that. I don't have that. Yeah, I mean, you uh, could hold the phone up to the. Uh, book. Yeah, but that's not going to show. That's not going to show it very well. You know, just a little screen like this. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. you know, either that, or if he can, send it to me, and I'll I'll play it on the air. I'll say here. Yeah, here, here are there Vernon's, you go. Vernon's, yeah, I didn't even think of that. I should have. Here done are that. Vernon's whales. You know. <laughs> so. Maybe uh, I which, can do it while uh, we're cause... while we're talking. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway, it was a nice trip up to Alaska, was it? It was. Uh, it started out. It started out kind of funky. We were supposed to leave Vancouver at four thirty in the afternoon, and we didn't leave until one fifteen a.m. because the fuel barge broke down that was supposed to resupply our ship. Oh wow! <laughs> so we didn't leave. Vancouver until 1.15 in the morning, which meant we had to adjust the itinerary of our sailing. It was a, mm -hmm. supposed to be a 10-day cruise, and our first stop was supposed to be Sitka. Well, we just blew right past Sitka. It kept on going to the Hubbard Glacier. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Um, but uh, still, it was, a good, uh, it was a good tour, right? Absolutely. I'll send you the video of the Hubbard how, Glacier. How many people also. are on that ship? This particular ship, I think uh, passengers... Up to 2,900. Really? That many? Yeah. Wow. Because Marjorie want, would love to find a smaller one. She doesn't, she doesn't want to travel with a lot of other people. She, she we just, saw a smaller ship, and I think the maximum on that particular ship was like 265. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, we'll have to check I that forget, out. I forget the name of it. I've got it in the photos somewhere, but I'll, I'll send you that See, name I, of that ship, I, I don't mind it because I, I, I've heard from so many people who have been on these, these tour, cruises, right, that if you're bothered by how many people are on the cruise, don't really worry about it because once you get on the ship, you don't feel like there's that many people on there. Because, That's true. You know, you just hang That's out. That's true. You know, you hang out where you hang out you know and um that it's not as terrible we, we met some new friends too and you know they they were on the whale excursion with us and uh got to chatting with them and they're from john they live in johnson tennessee and it turns out they're big liberals also and so we got along great well i don't want to make any new friends so <laughs> you got lucky on your cruise i met some liberals on my cruise to alaska that I'm still friends with that live in Chicago. And uh, I got seated at a table in the main dining room, my, my roommate and I, with some Republican nut job. And so we uh, stopped mm -hmm. eating in the main dining room. We went to the steakhouse and ate there every night. Uh, now, well, I mean, he was a Republican right-winger, but was he sitting there at dinner 
imposing his. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Should, did, why didn't there. you just tell him to shut up? We're on a cruise here. Yeah. Well, I said, to... can you keep your, keep your politics to yourself? And uh, well, I'm going blue. And what did he say? Hold on, just a second, please. Yeah, that didn't work. Uh, it, it depends on how you say it, you know. Well, yeah. you know, I don't know how I said it, but it doesn't really matter. It just wasn't polite. And the guy next to me said, yeah, we don't want to hear about your politics. We came to enjoy a cruise. You know, that's true. Yeah, that's, that's correct. That and one would so, be correct. You know, I was nice to the guy. There was no reason for me to be an asshole. It wasn't Donald Trump. Oh, I, I, you know, my age, it's great. At 83, you, you're, enti- you, you're allowed to oh, be an asshole. Oh, you get away with anything. You're, you're allowed to be an asshole. You just know he's a cranky old man. Yeah, we, ran into, we ran into one person on the cruise also that we never, we, we have, you know, avoided for the rest of the cruise. This lady was telling me about how she had COVID and ivermectin made her better. Okay. Wasn't that the horse tranquilizer? Did, did you did you buy her a bottle of Clorox bleach so she can inject it too? <laughs> no, I just avoided her like the plague. I bet. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, by the way, everybody, uh, COVID's back. Yeah, I heard that. Are you happy? Never yeah. Are you happy, yeah. everybody? Never. You can see here. masks here, Alex. We've got. I might say about fifty-fifty. Really? Most of the time, and I I carry mine with me. Mm-hmm. Is, I'm ready it, to it, go. is it coming? It's a, it's a new it, variant. It's a new variant it, out there. Is COVID yeah. back uh, out there where you are in Kuala Lumpur? Then, sure, it's everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. yeah. COVID is everywhere. Yeah, so it's back. But again. they're not talking about any other new shots like they are in the states. Yes. Well, yeah, we're getting uh, new ones next week, I think. Yep. Oh. You know. Yeah, I mean, if one were available, I'd, I'd, I'd take it, but it's just not available here. Not that I know of. Probably in Singapore. I feel like somebody's dog, you know. Uh, have you had your shots? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to wear the tags. I mean, I would wear the, the, other the, day, the other day. That's right. You got to have your little tag around your neck. <laughs> the other day. It's when, coming to that. The other day when my leg got better, Marjorie marched me up to Rite Aid and got me. She had already gotten them. This year's flu and the RSV, right? I mean, oh. how many how many of these things do you have to get? I mean, yeah. it's, I'm not going to school. I don't need to get my shots. You know. Well, I remember. T- I remember two years ago, Anthony Fauci was saying that this very well may become something that you have to take once a year. Yeah, yeah. but I'm telling you yeah, he's that uh, the mask I already now. I already took. Uh, a, um, a COVID about maybe four or five months ago, and now yeah. I'm taking okay, another one. I'm taking another one. What do you mean yeah. once uh, a year? Six months. Yeah. About every six months. Yeah. There, yeah. About every six yeah. months for people our age. Yeah. Yeah. About your knee, Alex. You didn't get that new uh, that new uh, compound that they squirt in there. That's like a gel. No, Marjorie what, get Marjorie gets that for her knee because she needs it. This one was, that Lee Trevino advertises. Yeah, no, she uses it. She gets a gel injected, and it's very good. It's helped her knee a great deal because she she never had a bad knee problem. But what happened was, one day, um, uh, she was walking down the street and a tourist knocked her over and broke her knee. Oh. Yeah, I remember that. I remember story. that. Yeah, I remember and, that. And so her I didn't knee think been... her knee would ever be the same. I mean, I I made that prediction. Is that true? Uh, she, she's she wears a uh, thing all the time now on her knee, just to keep. Right. It. Yeah. See. Yeah. I was right. Yeah. You know those towers I, behind me. Go back. I said that. Phallic. Well, I had I fell, you know, and then I got. Uh, the Look other. at just one of them. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> I fell, and you know, I I, I really. Has didn't anybody ever think. had two? Hmm. Has anybody ever had two penises in the history of the world? No, not really. Not Jose really. and Jose B. <laughs> yeah. Which two did I call? Anyway, I because I fell and I I hurt the knee. He gave me uh, cortisone, and it was like I couldn't. I was literally a cripple. Uh, I couldn't walk across the street without the use of a cane, which was very nicely supplied to me by Alan. Uh, and I go to the doctors, and he shoots me up with the cortisone, 
And I swear to you, within hours after I got the cortisone, he said it'll be about a week, but yeah. hours afterward, my knee was like 100% better. It was like I'd gone to Lourdes and somebody put hands on me. <laughs> yeah, but... Is, you is that a steroid? To... Hmm? It's a steroid, a, yeah. Steroid. Yeah, I will not do that, sorry. Well, I had a friend who, she had a bunch of rashes. Like She was in Thailand. She got a steroid shot. Within, mm -hmm. I'd say, you know, five or six months, her body just went crazy weird, like the thyroid or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I blame it. I think it was that uh, that steroid shot that did it. No, the steroid. No. I've had steroid shots for my last, arth, for my didn't last that long for my arthritis, body. and I've had it for this knee. And I'll swear to it. I'll swear to it. 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 I mean, I. I'm. I'm walking. You know, without any problem now. So, so, yeah, I mean, I, I've had steroid injections in my knees, my back, my carpal tunnel, wrist, and none of them have. I mean, there's a possibility. Well, Mar Marjorie is 90% cortisone. Marjorie yeah. is? Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've got problems with my left leg uh, lately. I don't know what it is, but I, I do have pain when I walk on my left leg. You're getting older, the, Bree. What are you, 40 now? Yes, that, this, is, this is what's happening. Me, you know. Welcome to your forties. Getting older yeah. is not for sissies. Hello. That's what they say. Mm -hmm. That's what that's they what, say. That's what Betty Davis said. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, so I mean, you know, it's uh, here we are, a bunch of old people talking about our ailments, right? Yeah. Can I go back to Vernon for a minute? Where did you uh, get on the ship and get off the ship? Vancouver. Vancouver, British Columbia. Yes, uh, oh, I was right. going to make. I forgot. I was going to meet Mike Georgia. Chisholm. No, I was going to meet Mike Chisholm, but he had some kind of a work thing that interfered with it. Otherwise, we were going to grab a beer. We went up there a day early, before we got on the ship, and Mike Mike was gracious enough to look at his schedule and see if maybe we could get together for a beer, but it didn't work out. No. Yeah. Well, what, what, what's that? I I got on and off the ship in San Francisco, which is forty miles away. There's a city up there, Dawson. I don't know if you're familiar with Dawson. No. But Dawson... British Columbia? Yeah. Uh, no, it's Dawson uh, up in the Klondike. Uh, oh, It was okay. one of the gold rush towns. Uh, and, well, and, the railroad goes all the way to Whitehorse. Yeah, well, it, this, it became very famous a few years back because what happened was uh, when movies were peddled around the country... Right? They would go from theater to theater to theater to theater. The last place on the leg was Dawson. And the movie company said, don't send them back. Costs too much to send them back. We don't need you to send them back. By the time they made it to Dawson, everybody was going to use the print, use the print. Don't send them back. So all of a sudden, Dawson got filled up with all these films. And they didn't know what to do with them. So they buried them all. Wow. And a few years back, somebody <laughs> discovered this fact, and they started digging them all up. And while oh, a lot yeah. of them had rotted away because they were nitrate prints, a lot of films were saved that never would have been seen the light of day after that. Uh -huh. So it was, uh, Dawson is, uh, I've always, always wanted to go to Dawson just for that reason, you know. It's Dawson's in the Yukon pretty... territory? Yeah, yeah. And uh, what else? I want some wild Soko. I'm trying to remember what city. There was one place in the Yukon that uh, Wyatt Earp wound up in and wound up running a bar and a you know a saloon and so on for many a year up there before he went down to Hollywood and became a, uh, he became a, you know, a... Celebrity. What? Celebrity? No, he became a... Uh, uh, he, he wound up being an advisor to Westerns. That's why when you see all the silent Westerns, they're probably more accurate than any of the Westerns that were made in the 50s. Because a lot of the people who are making those films had been cowboys in the Old Mike, West. Mike, Mike Press, I think, was one of the actors in the early days. And he was, he was a consultant to him, Western actor. Ooh. You know, he died, He died, I guess, in San Francisco. No, I've been to his gravesite. Uh, which yeah. one? 
His, it, it, they buried him originally <laughs> somewhere in Coma, and his wife, being <clears throat> Jewish, uh, dug him up or had him dug up and moved him to the Jewish part of the cemetery yeah. in Coma. Yeah, it is. It is a Jewish part of the cemetery. It's a Jewish <clears throat> cemetery. Yeah. 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 No, in fact, when I did my special for Channel Forty Four, the worst special ever done, uh, mm -hmm. one of the scenes we did was at Wyatt Earp's grave. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, he died. In, he did. Did he, did he die in San Francisco, or was he? I don't know. I, you know, maybe not. Maybe they they went up. They went up and and because I know it, what it is. It's Wyatt, <laughs> and then it's Josephine right next to him, right. and then right next yeah. to her is somebody else. And we assume that was probably her her son, or her husband rather, her final <laughs> husband, uh, and they, all of them got buried together. Like a I don't think Wyatt son. Earp ever had any kids. That we knew about. No, we never had any kids, and and they right. didn't. She, she did, didn't no. have any kids. No. But oh, she didn't. Anyway. Oh. oh, look at this. We're in a mall. Is that Brazier's or is there those purses? <laughs> uh, we're in a mall. We're in a That's Victoria's <laughs> Secret. It's amazing, isn't the Wi-Fi amazing, or, or the phone reception amazing, in Kuala Lumpur that he's in a mall. Yeah, not yeah. and I'm not even on my good sim. It's not. I'm on my bad sim. Yeah, it's not even breaking up at all. I have AT and T. You step oh, and feet into the mall that, and you lose your signal. What, what were you gonna speaking have? of that, Alex? Yeah. I, I applied for this job recently, and I had to get up uh, at 1:30 a.m. on a, on Saturday because they only had interviews on Friday afternoons. And so uh, we're going through. Uh, they couldn't reach me on. Uh, the phone and i said well yeah because i'm not on my u.s sim card right now i'm on my malaysian sim and they said oh you're outside the u.s we can't hire you and i said wait a minute it's for an online job right and they said yeah but you got to be in the u.s uh -huh. and i said well why because you think i don't have internet my internet's better here than it is in the states <laughs> and they're like we just don't do it so i'm like okay you're lost we won't hire you not if really. you're not in the united states yeah. Oh well, tell them you don't want them either. So. Wow. Well, that's exactly that. what I told them. That's uh, exactly you're, you're what not I told them. Alex. You're, you're not inside one of those big towers, are you? I am. I am inside. Wow! Look, just shoot up. Wow. Shoot up. Look yeah, at that. Yeah, shoot up in the sky. Like look! That. Look at that. Wow! Isn't it's that, amazing. It's amazing. It's just amazing. Well, let me Architecture see. Architecture is really nice there. Yeah. By the way, Brian hasn't said a word tonight. Let's say hello to Brian. Hi, Brian. Hi, Brian. Hi, Brian. Okay, hello, <laughs> Kev. Kevin. Where are you? You're not at home, are you? He's walking around Kuala Lumpur also. Where are you, Kevin? <laughs> I'm up at the University of Florida. Let's wait, go wait, to lunch. Wait a minute, hold on a second. some good places. Wait, wait a minute, be quiet. I've got to hear what Kevin's saying. Yes, Kevin, where are you? I'm up at the University of Oregon in Eugene. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're taking your daughter there, aren't you? Yeah. He's been crying which, all day. Uh, Look at him. He's been crying all day. Which faculty? Oh, boy. Is Here we go. Here we go. We're going to have... I uh, have friends there. We're, we're going to have empty nest syndrome, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Brian has a while till that happens. But when yes. it happens, he's going to be suicidal. So we all better... Hope I'm dead Go by that. Huh? Hope I'm Go dead. <laughs> Doubt, doubtful. That isn't the school mascot, is it? Yep. yep. Duck. Yeah. Duck. Oh, is it called? Are they called the ducks? The fighting ducks. Yep. The fighting ducks. Oh, okay. Jesus, couldn't mm -hmm. they find a better name? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Alex. Hey, ben, Pop quiz. Who is that? What'd you say? Pop quiz for you. Yeah. You know who that model is. You're going to have to go closer. That's not going to help you. I don't know. She's probably some uh, some Korean celebrity. Am I mm -hmm. right? Uh, sort of. You're, you're sort of right. It's not one of Blackpink, that's for sure. <laughs> that's, yeah, you're close. Well, who is it's it? It's not Blackpink, though. They are, they are all over... They are all over McDonald's now, too. If I go to McDonald's, I can get a half, uh, meal, uh, their meal with their keychain. Mm. Well, who is it? Well, you don't know them? No. 
That's Hanny. She's actually Vietnamese, but she's in a Korean pop group called New Jeans. Oh. That helped him a lot. I don't think he knows uh, who that is either. Well, I don't know, but I, I knew that Brian's, she probably Brian's was some... Brian's daughter must know. No, no, Brian, no. She knows, she knows, no. She knows Blackpink. My, oh, my, my other daughter and son, they probably know. <laughs> yeah, ask uh, if she knows uh, uh, Ditto and OMG and Attention. Is, she, is, is that, I bet is, she knows. Is that K-pop uh -huh. they're doing? Is she part of that? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he is breaking up now. <laughs> yes. Anyway. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm deep in the heart. But I'm, and I said I'm on my bad sim. If I switch to my good sim, then we'll be okay. I have three sims actually, so that I never lose the signal. And then there's Sai Sims who sells uh, clothing, doesn't he? Oh. <laughs> He used to. Evan and Vernon look like they're at the same hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Can you and knock on the wall and see if he answers? <laughs> <laughs> they may have adjoining rooms. So the latest news here today was that uh, there were many unindicted co-conspirators in Georgia, some of which are thinking about charging. Nice. And... Um, um, What's his name? Um, the uh, you know, oh. Mark Meadows. Uh, the got his, his, Mark Meadows got his uh, uh, transfer to federal court shot down. Right, he got that shot down. Oh. <laughs> and they're thinking of maybe charging. Uh, what's his name? Uh, oh God, my mind's up. Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham. Yeah, because yeah. he's one Beautiful. of the unindicted co-conspirators. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, the um, grand jury suggested that he and a bunch of other people also be included in the in the indictment. Yeah. And the reason is they there, didn't do all of them is because they just didn't want to top load the whole thing. You know, there were just too many people. Who, fountain in the background. Wow. Oh, look now at they that. want them all together. Somebody wanted them to go all together, and then somebody said no. Yeah. So, who knows? But anyway, you know. Well, you know the I only follow it tangentially. Actually, the, the Fulton County prosecutor wanted to keep them all together. Well, what's going to be fun is we this this trial in Georgia is probably is going to be uh, on TV. It's going to be video, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but it may not happen until after the election. Yeah, but what's wonderful about it is I I want to live to see it because. It'll remind us, I think, very much of the Nuremberg trials. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, they're going to hang them afterwards? Cool. <laughs> well, that could be. Well, what do you think, Josh? You think the reason they held back on, on the rest of these indictments was that would be too many indictments all at the same time? Mm, I don't know. Pro probably not. I don't think that was it. Um, I mean, I would say... They must feel that the elements of their participation was borderline or something. I mean, I think if they really believe that they committed a crime, mm -hmm. you know, that their duty would tell them, you know, then they have to prosecute that yeah, But crime. how many people can we prosecute at one time as a group, you know? We have a lot of courts. In many this. are involved in the conspiracy. I mean, that's, right. you know, how, if there's 100 people, you... You charge a hundred people. I mean, you can't say we're only going to do forty because that's all that fits in the courtroom. I mean, what forty? You know, so you take it. We're where talking it, about nineteen filling that courtroom up. Yeah, so I would say that the participation that they saw was peripheral or something along those lines, or they're just haven't done it yet because they may feel that their participation was within the same conspiracy but maybe was different elements of the crime and they'll hold that off or hold it over them to pressure them for more cooperation mm. uh, later when they need it. Or Didn't one of them want them. to... They may pressure they them to, to go testimony to federal and court. things like that, you know. A couple of them wanted to go to federal court but they've been shot down so far. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mm. think they're going to... Well, have okay, and that here's what it comes to. Um... When this decision comes down, will it, it'll be appealed, and where does it ultimately go, and how long does that take, and what's the ultimate penalty? Because that's how Trump, that's how he works. He's going he's gonna to prolong it as long as possible. 
hope he can get in the White House and just pardon everybody. And that's, you know, the end game. And, you know, based on the polls right now, uh, it's it's not uh, a, a, a dark horse dream memory. Uh, it, you know, he has a shot at the presidency. You have to admit that, I think. And, if and you, you have if to you also at, hope. If you look at polls, sorry, that Biden I'll stays agree. healthy. If you look at polls, I agree with you. But, you know, I don't think the polls are reflective of the mood of the country. Why are you saying that? Well, because uh, I read an article the other day that the, the primaries in this country distort polls terribly, mm. and that only 30% of the registered Republicans decide <laughs> who's going to be their standard bearer in a national election. 30% of Republicans, which means about 10%, about 10 million people in this country, <laughs> are deciding who's going to run for president for the Republicans. Well, my question... That's right, sure. My you question all that, is, but this, this is my <laughs> old question, okay? Well, Trump can get all of those votes and still lose the presidency. Yeah, but here's my, here's, here, here's my <laughs> question. When are we going to stop doing primaries? Because they <laughs> didn't exist at one point. You know, it was just like, when, when did we really <laughs> start getting into this whole thing of every state doing a primary, Josh? Do you know? Do you remember? Because when I was a kid, the way they really nominated people was they all went to this big convention, and then they would have like yeah. 30 votes before they could come out with somebody, and they'd go into dark, smoky rooms, and they would argue with each mm -hmm. other and everything, and it had nothing to do with primaries. And also, primaries are a waste of time because these people are only supposed to vote for the person that won the primary in their state on the first ballot. After that, they're anybody's game. So why are we even doing this? Because uh, Republicans have taken control of a lot of legislatures in this country, and the legislatures decide what they're going to spend money on, including the primaries. Well, I think, so. I think it's a complete waste of time for any state to do primaries. If, if, if the Republican Party wants to do primaries, then they should pay for the primary. They should have to pay for the cost of the primary. How many millions of dollars does it cost for New York every year to do primaries? Hey, it's your well, job. It's, it's your true. party. You decide among yourselves who your standard bearer is going to be. Did you hear about the lawsuit in Colorado? No. Okay. Somebody has filed a lawsuit in Colorado that Trump should not be allowed to be on the ballot. And already Trump is talking about trying to take that to federal court and get it to the Supreme Court. Again, they're using the 14th Amendment, Section 3, yeah. as a basis yeah, of the lawsuit, I, I, there saying several, that he cannot be on there. There are several states doing that. Well, this but. one's actually gone so far as the Secretary of State has accepted the lawsuit, and now challengers are trying to get it federalized. Mm hmm well, I mean, I just, I just think this whole notion of primaries are, are, are ridiculous, you know, and, and uh, we shouldn't have to pay for them. Uh, the people who benefit from them are the parties who then get some kind of winner, and, you know, they usually win on the first or second ballot at the convention. Mm -hmm. you know. But then you'd have well, state what conventions. I like, Alex, remember, then you'd have remember state when convention. you could have the... You could have the president in one party, and then the vice president was in a different party. Mm -hmm. uh, that was good. In mm -hmm. some states. Is is Kevin falling asleep? Nah. No, I'm still here. Uh, oh, he looked. You look so peaceful. Barely. Don't don't go to sleep because I'm a little tired myself, and if I see you falling asleep. <laughs> asleep. I've got to try to get some lunch. I'm, I've got to make some decisions here. Wendy's. Well, I can't. Well, there's no Wendy's here. Well, well, believe me, I wouldn't. Number one, I can't read the menu there, and secondly, I can't tell what the food is. They have pictures. See? Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. <laughs> do you, Do you just point to the picture? That would be like in Dubai. If you're American, do you just point to the picture? Yeah. Really? <laughs> well, Sorry, enjoy your fun. lunch, Bree. Yeah. Saya, saya Cuba, saya Cuba bahasa Malaysia. Saya lepas, saya makan. Hmm. 
I use their language, Alex. Yeah. Every time we see you, you're going out to eat. Wait a minute, he froze. Yeah, he's frozen. He's hungry. Oh, okay. and he's in the middle of that mall, so his Wi-Fi signal is, or his mm. cellular signal uh, has dropped. <clears throat> language. And we obviously have something other than AT and T. Two steps out of the parking lot into the mall, and you lose signal. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so oh, here's a little piece of information. Have you heard about Musk? Uh, everything about him, I can tell you anything. Well, what do you want to know about the Ukraine? Yeah. Yes. About well, Ukraine? he just didn't want to get involved, you know, at that point. Well, you know, you've uh, got... he thought it was a bit too much. But what he did is he, in case people aren't aware, he has, of course, uh, his uh, uh, what do you call it? Sky is Starlink. 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 I was going to call it Skynet, Starlink. but I think that was in the Terminator. Uh, uh, Starling. That's coming too, Alex. That is also coming. He, he had Star, Star, Skylink, and uh, that was giving uh, literally service, uh, satellite service to the people in Ukraine, and the government was using it as part of the war. Right. Well, he turned it off at a certain point because he didn't oh. want to get involved in the war. What an asshole. I find that a little bit uh, hypocritical because the reason he gave them all of those transponders to get them on Starlink in the first place was because the Russians had cut off all the other communications right. to yeah. Ukraine. Yeah. So, I mean, all of a sudden he decides that because they were going to be used to uh, maybe bomb some Russian uh, uh, munitions or they whatever. Using, they were using marine but, but, drones to attack but, Russian ships in the uh, Black Sea. Yeah. But they said they think he says that he thinks that they would escalate to nuclear warfare. That's that's the reason why he said. Well, I, is that his decision to make? I mean, he put those goddamn things up there. Yeah. You he, know, he just thinks that he would keep escalating and that would, you know, start nuclear war. And he didn't want to have that on his conscience. That's what he said. <laughs> do you do you guys buy that? No. Maybe Ukraine has a missile that can knock some of those out of the sky. No, I don't think so. I don't well, think so either. Well, but the other thing, Alex, is that Musk is, I don't know if you if you agree with this, he's sort of taking the space that was left over by Trump in in terms of, you know, there's, he, he seems to be... No, the space, uh, daily the, the, spa the, the leftover space that Trump isn't using. He used a lot of... <laughs> And he's, he's got a lot up. of similarities. Hmm? Yeah. Well, I don't well, know. He has a lot of similarities. In what yeah, he's an autocrat. <clears throat> he, he's an American autocrat. <clears throat> yeah. Well, uh, I, I'll tell you where I think they differ. I think, this is just my belief, okay, that um, Donald Trump is a, a gangster. No shit. Yep. Okay, plain and simple, a, a gam gangster, no question about it. And Musk isn't a gangster, you know. Uh, Musk is a, a a very smart guy who has a vision of the future, and if he would just stick to that and do all the space stuff, yeah. I'd be in his corner 100%. But I agree why with he you. ever went over and took Boy. over Twitter, which, you know, that would which he changed to X. Boy, there's a name on everybody's lips. Oh. You know. I, I can't believe that. It's like you, you own Kleenex and you decide, well, it's not a good name. You know, so you know, we should call it, call it, call it Clean Twitter. Like, what? <laughs> what? Yeah. He, he wiped off like thir at least $20 billion in brand value and, and, in, in one day and, and possibly more. He, well, he has some you know? kind of obsession cute. with the letter X. I mean, you got SpaceX, and now you have X, you know. Uh, so, oh, uh, what, what, what is that? What kind of, what kind of? <laughs> I don't know, what kind of creature this is. But yeah. it's uh, this is a, one of the telcos here, called Unified. I and, see. Uh, is that, offer... is, oh, that's a person in that balloon thing, whatever it is. It's Donald Trump. Yes. It's got orange hair. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Donald Trump would like this. Have you had, you, right? uh, uh, um, um, Josh, have you had an opinion about Musk particularly, or do you just? 
I will, I do, but I will not say, and if you want, I will message you the reason why I will not say. Why? Mm. Oh, really? Well, <laughs> he doesn't own the company you work for or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, you'll you message me, and I'll, I'll <coughs> what are you doing, on Facebook? I'll send it to you right now, yeah. Okay, well, on Facebook. Let's just be better off I'm right now. That way, Alex can tell us. One of his penises and drive up into the space and stay there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's see what he uh, what he says uh, here. Uh, let's see here. Um, but you can't say what he tells you. Hmm? Oh, he might be able to say it. It just well, might be connected. I, I, yeah, oh, I, I can't imagine why he has to be so secretive about his opinion of Donald Trump, but maybe I'll see why when he says oh, it's Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Elon Musk, excuse me. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but don't say it. He hmm. might own the company that Josh works for. It might be a parent. Or, Come on, I, 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 Elon Musk no. has a lot of holdings, but I don't think it's in paint. Here we go. The company they work for. Hey, don't say it. Don't say it. Okay, blah, blah, I blah, see. Blah, 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 blah. I see. Yeah. see. Oh, I see. Okay, all right. Okay. okay. Well, okay. Next, and next one up. of the things. Uh, one of the things that Musk is similar to Trump is that uh, he apparently likes the stiff people, vendors, and bills, and he likes to just work it out through the court system. I never heard that. Anybody here heard that? Uh, yeah, when I first worked, when I first knew the guy, he, he screwed our company. Oh, did he really? Oh, yeah. How I far? To, I had to go pick up 30, 30 liters of nitrogen because he wasn't paying us when they were bu- first building the Tesla from San Carlos. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I had to how go lo- pick how- up all the nitrogen that he was using how long because ago? he never paid us. How long ago was that? Oh, shit, that was back in the early 90s. Oh, okay, okay. So you're talking about when he was first starting and... Yeah, no, he yeah, still does and, it. And he probably didn't he have did the money Twitter. to pay is what happened. Yeah. You know. yeah, he didn't pay us, so I went. And, I was the one, that, one of the drivers that went and picked up all the fucking nitrogen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, but he still does it today. He does. Yeah, uh, so it's no, it's I haven't no heard secret. that about him, but you know, who? How do I Just know? Just Google it. Just Google it, Alex. It, well, Just yeah. put that's it in Musk. People, that's, how, that's how those people make their money. They don't pay people, and they get better and <laughs> yes. better at it. And they just yep. keep doing it and doing it. And well, you know what amazes it? Well, what, what, and it's true also. Look if at you Trump. look at wait, Richard wait, wait, Branson, everybody, he, everybody knows. Look at Bezos. Same thing. Well, everybody wanted to tell And you know Richard Branson? He was very famous for borrowing $5 off of everybody at lunch. He never carried money. He thought it was funny. You know, like he's a billionaire, but he doesn't have money, so everybody's got to pay for him. And it's like, that's that's really that's really bad. You know, you know to stick you, everybody well, around you, and they know they want to be in your if orbit. If I were a billionaire, would I be picking up everybody's tab? I'm trying Maybe. to think. Right? You, and, and you picked up everybody's the, tab anyways. I used to. I really did. People that are important. Really? I'm coming to New York. <laughs> they pay the people. Oh, that he I used pay. to. In San Francisco, he oh, used oh, to. Oh. Yeah, I, okay. used to, I used to take all the comics out to lunch. You know. San Francisco's playing Pittsburgh tomorrow. <laughs> Go Steelers. Is that no, but San Francisco man. is not really a football town, right, Alex? Is, I mean, is, they got is, cheerleaders. Is that, is that basketball the... you're talking about? Uh, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. There's no basketball right. in Pittsburgh. Anyway, we got the anyway, 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 um, yeah, um, okay. it, it it it's just amazing to me that that uh, anybody has anything to do with Trump because he has no loyalty. He doesn't pay his bills. Uh, if you go to jail for something he asked you to do, or being tried for something he asked you to do, he doesn't pick up the tab. <laughs> and what he did, this I is, think, the, what was the latest thing I read that he was asking his uh, his followers to send him money to pay all the bill, help pay a hundred thousand dollars to all these guys like uh, Giuliani and so on to defend themselves. A hundred thousand to well, defend themselves is, in that is, case? Are is, you kidding me? This is why I've always wondered where he gets his loyal friends from. What, I don't, what, these what, are the people that have worked in the in the in the, in the ground 
the ground yeah. the ground level well, the question their is, workers that have worked in you know in construction and everything else yeah. and they're the ones that are out there going oh yeah trump and they're the ones hammering nails and not getting paid for it you, you ask any any union any union about trump they're gonna say fuck that guy but you, you know they're still out there going oh trump is great trump is this trump is that but they're the they're the people getting screwed, the, the ha- hammer nailers and everything else. Yeah, I don't I don't understand it. Well, I mean, I he, just don't get it. Yeah, but he, they're out there. Well, here's the here's the they're other rock. here's the, here's the problem that Trump's going to face. I think it's only a matter of a little bit of time here before some of these people who are co indicted co conspirators turn mm-hmm. tail on Trump. We've we've been saying that for ten years. Well, no, because I mean, why should they have any loyalty? I mean, if you were Giuliani, okay, let's just take Giuliani, probably the dumbest of the people to follow Trump, right? Uh, Giuliani um, uh, has every reason to turn tail on this guy. He's not, he's this is driving Giuliani <coughs> broke, literally broke. Right. He and losing have, his law license too. He doesn't have. Well, he does, yeah. forget about that. That's already happened. But he doesn't have a penny really left to his name because he spent it all trying to defend himself here. But yeah. Trump is oh, giving yeah. him money. No, Trump by, is Trump is not by giving letting money. him use his facility. His what, what facility? Golf place. Yeah, what facility? What? Now he wasn't isn't using his the golf place. Giuliani. Trump. Yes, he's having a meeting there, and and you, you don't you have a thousand dollars? That's what he needs, a thousand bucks to come there and talk to them. And I never, make, I never heard any of this. Well, huh? well, how's he flying around? Find he's flying around on a, on a private jet. Who's paying for that? The seven fifty seven. Oh, well, his his acolytes, mm-hmm. all these all these poor people who think he's the godsend, who are sending him money to defend himself. No, that I'm money is going to the Giuliani. airplane. Yeah, I'm talking about Giuliani. Oh, oh Giuliani. Giuliani flying around. I don't know. Oh. I mean, he's probably going right. to have to bicycle pretty soon. He's probably taking Uber. Right. He's taking oh, Uber. Yeah, Uber. <laughs> He, he, he flew his, into he flew into his uh, his arraignment on a on a private jet, you know. He and he got carried he around on the first civil. Well, you know, there may be certain people who are 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 pals of Giuliani's that are doing this because uh, they want to do be. it for Giuliani. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't. Hey, Alex, mean. I'm gonna bug out now because I gotta buy something and get some lunch. So okay, well, go get I'll some talk lunch. To you later from, and thank you so much for showing us Kuala Lumpur. We appreciate it. Yeah, it's okay. great to be here. Bye, bye, Bree. Bye, bye. Okay. Yeah. Bye, bye. Little travelogue going along with the show tonight. No, but I mean, it's just you know, I, 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 I Giuliani's in bad shape right now. So I, I read somewhere where he doesn't have a penny to his name. Right. Literally. He's selling right. his house and. Manhattan. Hmm. Right now, and, that's and those right. two, those, those two election workers down in Georgia have sued his butt for for defaming him. Them. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And and and, it, and they got a summary judgment against him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah so I'm I'm sure soon enough, you'll see like a uh, a stop order on selling his homes and and things of that nature or whatever. I mean because. You know he'll have his assets attached to the the judgment basically i mean you know if he doesn't have money to pay the full amount then the the courts can seize what he does have to yeah to raise funds towards that goal so you know it, it, it's gonna get what he deserved you know i mean i'm not gonna cry over it you know that's for sure nope. do, you, do you remember how this guy was venerated in this country how this guy was america's america's mayor well, I didn't believe it then. But well, no, nope, I'll right. tell you, New York, a lot of New Yorkers didn't believe it back then. They knew what a lousy mayor he had been, and that it was a stroke of luck that those towers got hit because he just did everything Stop right all of a sudden. You know, wasn't he? Wasn't he the one who started Stop and Frisk? I believe so. I believe so. Tommy yes. in New York, yeah, I think so. But it wasn't stopped by. Uh, wasn't stopped by. Uh, uh, Bloomberg. Bloomberg. 
and uh, oh. it wasn't necessarily stopped by the last mayor. I think he finally ended it at a certain point, um, but it, it, it went on for a long time. But it was started by him, no question about it, you know. Yeah, I mean, he'll he'll have real trouble, you know, and... But, I mean... What we, what we said earlier, you know, I'm sure the prosecution down there still has the cards for someone like Lindsey Graham and others. They don't necessarily have to charge right now, but they can use that mm -hmm. to just get small pieces of testimony or things... You know, I mean, that's probably the reason they haven't been charged yet. It's, but it's but all I'm saying is there was nobody more loyal, I think, to Donald Trump than Rudy Giuliani. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Or Michael Cohen. Mm -hmm. Forget him for now, for now. You're changing the subject. I'm talking mm -hmm. about Giuliani. Loyalty. Giuliani, but Trump is not doing anything for Giuliani. No, you know, no. you're, you're on your own. That way. He just said, I'm try trying to raise a hundred million dollars, a hundred thousand uh, dollars mm -hmm. from my contributors uh, to pay some of the bills of these people. There are nine, 18 other other ones, okay, <laughs> beside himself. I mean, yeah, you, Trump could step right in and help him, but do you think he does? Hell no. No, no, absolutely That's not. That's bullshit. So, I mean, if I were Rudy Giuliani, I'd turn tail on the whole thing. I'd say, screw you. Bro, yeah, Trump yeah. under the I've bus. Been, I've been loyal long enough. What? There's a few guys that should be doing that, but yeah. they ain't going to do they it. They say they quite a few it. may be throwing Trump under the bus. Because I think they get starstruck when they get in front of him. Well, the IT a, guy at Mar-a-Lago is, th is throwing Trump under the bus. There are a lot of lawyers. There are a lot of He's lawyers. Cooperating. A lot of lawyers who didn't get paid by Trump. Who are now being have been indicted in Georgia? Who are now having to go in and defend themselves? You know, and all they were doing was a job for Trump. They thought they were on the Trump train, right? And he, the Trump train was a train that screws the hell out of you. You know, so I just don't know. You know, he should want these people to be to be loyal to these people, so they'll be loyal back to him. But they're not going to be. And a lot of these he, he people... Know how to work that. It's huh? a one-way yeah. situation. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't know how to work that. Yeah. He so, doesn't... He, he does but a, but he, he demands, a, he that, demands yeah. ultimate loyalty himself. And, That's and, right. And you know, one thing you can never get Phil Meyer to admit, okay? Yeah. The characteristics we talk about Donald Trump fit to a T the definition of a sociopath. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. There's no Are you talking about it. Phil Meyer or Trump being a sociopath? No, I was talking about <laughs> Trump being a sociopath, but I, Phil I would never know. admit that Trump fits that description. Yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, uh, that's uh, the, I'm playing the theme that you all know. Uh, and uh, uh, thank you. Uh, it's great having you here. Oh. I want to thank Bree, by the way, for that little tour of Kuala Lumpur. His, his reception is pretty damn good. And Much, there's no satellite delay. You know something? You're right. Uh, 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 there is no... Wow. No, there's no satellite delay at all. Uh, communications. What does it become? I'm hooked up to my phone. Anyway, I want to thank <laughs> Jeff for being here. And I want to thank Josh for being here. A big thank you to our old friend uh, and uh, associate... Uh, Vernon Nunn and Alan. Check thank your phone, you. Alex. I sent you the video. Oh, okay. I sent it to your sent it to your mobile phone. Okay, then I will try and do something with it. Uh, let's see here, Alan. Uh, thank you, Brian. Oh, good having you here. And of course, Kevin, you look exhausted from taking the kid to college. Uh, Still be in the dim room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. That's the citizen panel uh, for tonight. Uh, those are the people that uh, inhabit this fine program, and we appreciate them for calling. Uh, and uh, they're going away. And Jack Bishop is next over most of the same gabnet with the intersection. I'll see you on Monday with our pop-up show. It'll be available on Facebook Live. And then we'll see you again next Wednesday. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell
tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice weekend.